Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Finds. And I got a whole bunch of newly pressed vinyl I want to show you guys. And first up are three records I got from the site FYE. And the reason I got them from FYE is because I got a $100 gift card for doing this video on Friday Music. Well, it turns out Friday Music didn't like my video, so I had to take it down. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but if you did, it was only up for three days. In that, I mentioned that they sent me all these records and they sent me a gift card. So anyway, I use that gift card for these first three records. And the first one I got was Tame Impala's Lonerism, which is Tame Impala's second studio album. What's interesting about this is I thought this sticker was on the shrink wrap, but no, they put it on the record itself, which kind of bothered me in a weird way. Like, I get it, it's Tame Impala. I can read on the side right there. I don't need a sticker on the record itself. Opening it up, it is a gatefold. Get another shot of that park somewhere. I think it's in France. You get lyrics here, and on the back there, you get the man himself just jamming away in his crazy setup. Look at all that equipment, pretty cool stuff, but he does pretty cool music. Sadly, I haven't listened to this yet. I do know some of the songs off of here, but I just haven't had time to really check this record out. Now, it's uh, a double LP, so you got two records here, and they come in these paper sleeves, which I'll probably, I'll probably clean this record and then uh, put them in some nice anti-static sleeves. There's the B-side, and record two here features some different artwork not featured on the cover there. And this is side C and that is side D. Next up is kind of embarrassing that I never had this record. This is David Bowie's The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars. It's just a record that's eluded me. I mean, when you do find it, it goes for a lot of money and I just never see it in used bins. So I figured why not? They had a lot of David Bowie, but for some reason I, this one Seems iconic and it's, you gotta get it. I wanted to find Low, but they didn't have Low, so I figured, eh, I'll get this one. It does come with a reprint of the original inner sleeve, which I thought was pretty cool. Need some lyrics there. The record itself came in kind of a nice poly-lined paper sleeve. And what I like too is that these labels, instead of like, have it say RCA, it's got, in the RCA style, it's got Bowie right there, which I, really dig. Now, this last record from that FYE bundle, this is Californication. And if you guys remember, I did a first impressions of their record from last year, 2016, The Getaway. And I was kind of lukewarm on that record. I thought it was okay, but it wasn't amazing. And in that, I mentioned they lost me at Californication. Well, a lot of you guys have said this is one of their best albums. And uh, so I was like, you know what? I should probably revisit this record and see what it's all about. And so this is it. This is their newer pressing. You know, nothing too special about the cover here. It's just your standard boxy record sleeve. It does come with an insert and a lyrics on one side. What I do like is both records come in poly-lined paper sleeves. What's a little confusing is that the numbers aren't sequential. They're sequential to the disc number. So this is disc one, side one, side two. And then <laughs> record two, side one, side two. A little confusing. I mean, at first I thought I got two of the same records, but of course I didn't. Anyway, I look forward to checking this out. I don't know if I'll do a review, but I'll definitely do a first impressions on this record. I think I'm gonna change my opinion on this album once I listen to it in its entirety. Up next, you guys probably already saw, is the classic record, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. This thing, oh my gosh. I had never actually heard it until I picked it up and it just, whew, it blew me away how good this record is. I. I Man, I just, I can't get over it. They just knocked it out of the park with this record. So inside it does come with this, I guess it's a poster. The band looking pretty 90s right there. And you got lyrics on this side. What's interesting about this one is that you have a completely different numbering system. So you have side A and side B, and then you have side C and side D. I guess they're just staying true to how it was released back in the day. I just I just find that really interesting. Because I feel like both of these Chili Peppers albums were pressed at the same time. I think they were pressed at RTI just based on these baggies. These are so indicative of, of that pressing plant, but I could be wrong. 
Anyway, this is a must-own album. You guys should definitely pick it up if you haven't already. This is Yours Dreamingly by The Arcs, and this is uh, Dan Auerbach's side project, Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys, and uh, I, I enjoyed this. I remember some of the singles on the radio, and this record isn't my favorite, and the printing on this is a little soft, so it makes me feel like they just blew up CD artwork. Like, I'm not too impressed with the overall packaging. But the music was decent. The music was good. I, I think it's worth picking up, but I don't know how memorable this album will be in 10, 15 years. I think it might get forgotten to those who aren't really fans of Dan Auerbach or the Black Keys. And inside here, you get some uh, naked ladies listening to the record. And here you just have, I guess just, uh, yeah, just credits and thank yous and whatnot. And here is the record itself. I really do like those labels. Look pretty good. And there's side B. The arcs, it's worth a listen. I don't know if it's a must own though. So up next, we got Coldplay's Ghost Stories. This is from 2014. And I just picked it up on a whim and I did enjoy it. I do like Coldplay. They're not my favorite band, but they always produce really good music and this one did not disappoint. It didn't blow me away or anything, but I, I did enjoy it. And this one did come with a picture inner sleeve there. You get some... Uh, credits and whatnot, and then another image, which I really like the quality of this. I'm not sure what this is taken from, but I really like it. Here's the record itself. There's side A and side B. If you like Coldplay, it's worth picking up. Oh yes, this next record, this one I hold near and dear to my heart. I actually own it on CD. At this time in my life, Foo Fighters were huge. They were the funniest band I couldn't believe that Dave Grohl could come out of a band like Nirvana and then have all these songs. Like, I was so impressed with their debut. And then this one just blew that one out of the water for me. And I just, I had to own this. I love this artwork. Looking at it now, it looks very 90s, but man, does this album still hold up. And there's the back there. Let's see, does this one come with anything? No. And what's nice is that both records came in poly-lined paper sleeves. Kind of went out of order here. This is side four. And that's side three. And here is side one and side two. Definitely a must own Foo Fighters album. This is one of their best, really right up there. Just a great late 90s record, awesome. And then I got Weezer's Everything Will Be All Right in the end. And a lot of you guys said, you really should check this out because I did a pick of the week on the White Album. And a lot of you said that you know, this was really their return to form and the White Album was just sort of piggybacking off of this album in terms of like returning to their old sound. And at first I didn't know what to think of this record. It was good, but I, I don't know. It took me a couple listens to, for it to really grow on me. And then I just, I loved it. I love The British Are Coming. Cleopatra is probably my favorite song off of here. And I love this last song, the Future Scope Trilogy. Just a really, really fun record. And again, I think, yeah, I got this at Fry's. The cover is a little beat up. This corner is a little messed up, but honestly, I think for the money I paid for it, it was totally worth it. And this is a gatefold. I do love this painting here. And on the back, it's just uh, more of that front cover image. So I'll just expand it out for you guys. And this one did come with a digital download code, which was which was cool. And it also came with this lyric sheet with probably, yeah, some credits and thank yous and whatnot. Here is the record itself. You probably can't tell in the camera, but from my perspective, it's just, it, it just looks a little, a little foggy. Like there's some residue on it, but I've cleaned it a couple times and it's as good as it gets. Definitely worth picking up. It's not their best album. I don't think anything can top Pinkerton or the Blue Album, but it, it's up there. It's it's Weezer as Weezer doing Weezer well. <laughs> and then lastly, I got this box set, and this is 94 East featuring Prince. And I ordered this, I think, back in September. It was a pre-order through Pop Market, and it only just arrived in April. It took forever. Like I could not find a receipt and I thought, did they even charge me for this? What happened to this record? And it finally came and it was pretty cool. It came with a digital download code and also came with this, not really a booklet, more like a a leaflet of uh, Roger Murdoch sort of giving you some context on these recordings. And I'll basically summarize in a moment, but here is the track listings. It's three records, six sides, Though the last side is a really poorly recorded rehearsal, 
it's interesting to listen to, but it definitely was made on a tape recorder, like cassette tape, and it, it doesn't have the best quality. They did a lot to clean it up, but you can only do so much, right? And this does play at 45 RPM. So really you get about five sides of pretty solid music, well-recorded music. So what's so interesting about this band, 94 East, is that this is the earliest known professional recordings of Prince. Now, before you get too excited, Prince doesn't have any vocals on this. He's pretty much playing instruments like guitar and keyboards. He's 17 at this time, and man, he is already a virtuoso. It's, it's amazing how well he plays on this. And what I find fascinating is that this, is, this came out, a lot of these recordings were done in 1977, and so, so many of these songs have this weird sound, and not weird in a bad way, but they sort of sit in between two time periods because there's a lot of 70s influence, but then you hear these seeds of the 80s, of what would go on to become the sound of the 80s. So one of these songs has this drum and bass rhythm that's very indicative of the time. You know, you know what sound I'm talking about. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's just got this sound, right? But a lot of the the instruments and the vocalizations are very much in the 70s vein. Not like disco, but more like Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's a very interesting record. It's very much a timepiece, not only of the Minneapolis, Minnesota sound, but just sort of what would become Prince and, and all the satellite bands around Prince. I mean, he really was a powerhouse, a, a comet just rocketing through the Midwest. And it's, it's, it's a cool listen. I can't say it's for everyone. Um, there is, I think, a, a smaller release, just a single record that might be more up your alley. I don't know if you have to go out and get this box set, but I figured why not? This just has all the known recordings. Maybe some of them aren't as good as others, but they just included them all for the completest. Yeah, let's just go through the, the records real quick. And all three records came in these black paper polyline sleeves. Let's see, is this, I think this is record, yeah, I think this is record one. <laughs> I'm not really sure. They don't really list them very well there. I believe this is the second record again. Another, that Prince label. And then finally, we have the third record here. And yeah, like I said, this last side is just one song and it plays at 45 RPMs while the rest of the album plays at 33. So it's good to keep that in mind <laughs> when you flip it over. Yeah, not much else to say about this. I was happy to get this. It was really cool to listen to this. But again, I don't think it's for everybody. It's definitely for the more diehard fans out there. Well, that'll do it for this time. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. And let me know what you think of my picks. Until then, I am your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey guys, thanks again for checking out this episode of Awesome Finds. Now if you're hungry for more, I put a playlist right there, as well as a video that YouTube has chosen for me. So go ahead and click away.